Hello, welcome to CarCast. I'm Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea. Goldberg's out today. I've invited my good friend, Brad Fanshaw from Bond Speed Wheels. How are you? Doing well. How are you doing today? Doing all right. Uh, as we're recording this, you just uh, had a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. Thank you. I uh, I uh, just feel uh, younger today. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> just feel younger every day. Um, yeah. Great. I... Wanted to just kind of get into a few things. First and foremost, those of you that have been following on social media already, I've got the SAC Mustang, the MK1 up on Bring a Trailer. Um, you know, it's not something that I want to sell. I get a lot of that. It's like, why are you selling it? Why are you selling it? And um, it, quite simply, you know, we have uh, a, a beverage company, Bravago, and I want to put money into that company. So um, that's what you do with an, with an investment car is because it was an, a car that I would was really driving. I wanted to be able to put some into this company. As you guys have seen, we have uh, hard seltzers. You can go onto the website. You can order it. We're starting to get into a few stores. But I really have some new product ideas. I want to launch some new products. And to do that, I've got to pay for it. And to pay for it, I have to sell stuff. And to sell stuff, that means I'm going to have to sell the SAC Mustang. Um, it's number 50. They built 62 plus a few prototypes. So some people say 65, some people say 64, but I don't know. According to the the documents from the, uh, from the SAC registry, uh, there was 62 plus some prototypes. And I thought they all had the Kenwood cassette radio, but apparently they didn't. And mine is one of six that was optioned with that. So if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, you can you can see the car because we're kind of scrolling through some of the images of it right well, back now. Back in but the day, Kenwood was, I mean, that was the setup, you know? So that was a cool option. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, it was interesting because it was just a cassette. You know, what's interesting is I got the window sticker for this thing. It was almost $42,000 in the day. And then the year later, when the 93 Cobra came out, it was half the cost. It was like 20,000 bucks, 21,000 bucks. So uh, throwing the, the Ford Motorsport parts catalog at it uh, was more expensive than building it from the factory. I just wanted to find that sheet. Um, scrolling through all the images where, um, yeah, so 62 cars built and then six prototypes, 64 of them were numbered cars. Anyway, it's all there. You can kind of interpret it however you want uh, by just going through what what's listed from the SAC registry. But one of six with a Kenwood cassette player. I didn't know that. That was kind of interesting to me. Um, but you know why? Because back then, everybody thought, Oh, I can throw a stereo in myself. You know, why have it optioned with that? Probably, you yeah. know, because that was a super easy thing. It was before all of the, you know, double din and all of the craziness of utilizing, you know, your uh, wiring harness for so many different functions. Putting in a stereo was a simple option. This is, um, oh, maybe I'll just turn the sound off here, but uh, just kind of looking at the the videos that I posted, I did a walk around of the car, but when I got it, just because it was sitting and had a little bit of miles on it, um, I got, I did all the dry ice blasting. And I know I've talked about this on the show and Brad, you've, uh, we've talked about it quite a bit, but I don't yeah. know if you've seen the process. And I have, I checked it out after we talked about it because I was thinking on some of the cars that I own, it might be useful in certain areas. And it's, it's a great process because you can control it so much easier than like a uh, other types of media blasting. Yeah, and you can you can clean, uh, you can clean a door panel. You can clean. Um, we did the hood liner of the car, so uh, so it's gentle on that. And then underneath, all the the guck and the grime and everything was removed from the car, and it made it really clean. Now it's not inexpensive to do. Like depending on how much you want to do, it could be a, a couple thousand bucks. Um, to get it done and there are, but for me, I think it's worth it for a collector car like this that only has 3,631 miles on it. Uh, I think it's worth doing. So um, I, I got some, I was getting photos of the, of the engine 
when they do the dry ice blasting, all the little grooves in, on the GT40 intake, all in, in there and all around like the power steering reservoir, um, all the that seeps, like it does such a good job cleaning everything on it that I thought it would be worth doing. So anyway. It also brings the, uh, you know, some of the hoses and wires back to life a little bit you know it gives them a yeah. real nice appearance it, it, uh, it does and then see this picture on the firewall where there's two uh, uh bolts holding on the, with the, the fact tower marking. brace yeah so it can clean everything and the factory like paint pen markings and stuff that you've seen it retains all of that so it's a really cool process but anyway it was pretty much the only thing that i did to the car and then changing all the fluids because it was sitting for a while again it's it's a 92 and it's got 3,600 miles on it. I really don't know if anybody changed the oil or when or whatever. So I went through and did all of the fluids, coolant, brake fluid, diff, transmission, oil. I just did everything on it uh, just to kind of freshen it up. And I, I put 20 miles on it in two years. <laughs> Uh, so know. not not a lot, but anyway, the car is there. Does it have it's on the uh, factory air in the tires? No, I replaced the yeah. tires. So the tires, when I got the vehicle, the tires weren't original. Um, and that's that's an interesting point, though, Brad, because I know you're joking, but uh, now people are going back and buying the original tires, like like new old stock, trying to find uh, the original tires for things. But when I sure. bought the car, it didn't have original tires on it. And the ones that were on were, were old. And I just didn't want this thing to be dangerous in any way, especially if somebody wanted to drive it, drive it. So I put new tires on it. Um, you know, I, I didn't, I, I didn't put like the most expensive Michelins or something on it. Cause I didn't think people were going to drive it much if, even if they did, but it's got new tires on it. And if you're going to um, drive it at all, you, you yeah. should, because all it takes is one tire uh, blowing out because it's rotted, and then you're going to damage a wheel or worse, go into a curb or something and damage the car. So it's not I, worth it. I mean, listen, this is this is what happened to Paul Walker and Roger Rodas. I mean, they took out the Carrera GT old tires that were hard as a rock, gave it a little throttle, and it was just running on like aluminum discs. Basically, at that point, you're just running on on hey. on on hard on pieces of plastic and steer about yeah. uh hard tires and what they can do to a boat trailer so i mean <laughs> yeah. they can really mess up your day yes <laughs> they can they can mess up your day actually i when i when i got my um my black ford lightning painted and i trailered it out to a, a shop um and it was it was a ways out there from la it was you know it was out past um past uh ray shop at full throttle custom so yeah that's uh, past magic mountain and stuff and and i borrowed the, the trailer from the one of the guys at the shop and uh i think it blew two of the four tires on the way up there so i had to put all new tires on it and then i just left the trailer while they painted it and drove home and then went back and grabbed the trailer and in the truck all at once but yeah i've been through this process as no, well I, I, trailers it, get neglected man i'm telling you you park them do. for a while you forget out about them kind of don't think and sometimes you can't even remember when you put the tires on my car trailer i left it in arizona at my place for a while and i threw a car on it and i got back and i got so lucky because i literally backed into my driveway with the car and one of the tires went boom and i went oh <laughs> man that could have happened anywhere, you know. So. Wow, that's like a, a a Blues Brothers moment at the end when yeah, they finally you know, stopped the car, then the whole thing just fell apart exactly. into pieces. And, and then that trailer sat there for like a year with one blown out tire. I, I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah, I I think when we park trailers like that, when they get parked outside, you know, the sun as well just really it ruins the the tires, just the damage and the heat. It does. Um, it just messes anyway, up. uh. It ends on Friday, so if you're listening to this uh, immediately, you can go to Bring a Trailer. You can bid on it. You can go to YouTube. You can watch the videos. You can see the Bring a Trailer listing. Um, it's all up on the YouTube CarCast channel. Um, or and we're if going you... for a world record, right? That's it. We're going for a yeah. world record. I mean, I would be perfectly fine with that. A world record would be fine. I've got nothing against uh, setting setting a record for, for a SAC car. Um, 
if you feel like you don't really have the money and you don't want to get a sack car, that's no problem. You can still go to the website and buy plenty of Bravago. You can go to drink. Look at that. And uh, you could you could sit there and have a cocktail and dream about the, the car that you weren't able to get. And the car that I had to sell so I can make more booze. <laughs> um, anyways, thinking about what, what else is going on. Uh, I still think you should have just wrapped the car in Bravago and just, uh, you know, just kept it. Made a but promotional you, piece out of it. But you, that would have been your new advertising budget. That would have been, <laughs> that would have been my, that would have been my whole budget. I would have blown it all on a wrap. <laughs> and then you wouldn't have been able to drive the car because you wouldn't want to put any miles on it. So, uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, speaking of wraps, Ford is saying that they're going to offer the new Mustang with uh, a matte PPF uh, from the factory. And you can get it on any color option. So if you, you can get any of the gloss painted cars and if you wanted a matte paint protection film, on it, they'll offer it up on any of the cars, um, on any of the colors. They're going to do the coupe first, and then the convertible will come after it. It's going to be $5,995, and it will have a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty um, on on the wrap. Um, yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of interesting. You can – I don't know why they're just offering a matte version well because it comes glossy i guess they don't care about i think what they're doing when you read the release that it adds another almost another color option they're doing it almost like another paint color rather than the protective end of it and but i just i'm just impressed that since you're a big ford guy they named it after you and they're calling it a (laughs) matte clear so uh that's great um i'm trying to share the screen so you can see it but i don't know if you can see it do you see the video playing right now I do not see the video playing. You do right not now. see the video playing. Right it's now. just a lead in. It just says what it is. Oh, well, now it's. Now, now it's did it broken. freeze up? And yeah. Great. Let's see if, let's there we if go. That'll there work. We go. Uh, yeah, I don't know no, where it's going. But I mean, you know, it's because uh, there are more and more people that want that matte finish. So I think it's just a, an option that they probably talked about with the dealers and they're doing it that way. Yeah. Um. Anyway, it's just kind of an interesting idea. And it'll, like I said, it'll be on the coupe and the convertible at some point. It's interesting that their promotional photo, when they say it can be available in any color, they didn't choose a real vibrant color and put it over like a red or a blue. They use that more muted tone. Yeah, that is kind of interesting that I saw that as well. But yeah, I don't know why they didn't pick that or the, the, the crazy blue color shifting one if you can get it in that color i don't know why they better put do the that mat that over it doesn't yeah. color shift anymore though it probably just turns into some weird i wonder what you don't think about yeah it. i don't i don't have thought about it because if you think of like the cobra back in like oh four you can get it in the mystic chrome right and what if you wrap that mat i don't know what that does i don't know that's kind of interesting What's because that? i've seen some interesting colors like if you take something like silver and silver has metallic in it and reflects a lot of it, a lot of light. And then I've seen that with a satin clear coat over it, which gives it like a muted, like frosted effect. Uh huh. But the metallic still reflects some light. So in certain angles, it's got kind of a, like a, like an ice cube effect, right? Like not a perfectly clear, kind of the white cloudy ice cube. Right. To it. And it, then it's it muddy is what it, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of interesting though. Um, I don't, I don't remember where I first saw that. Uh, you know, it, but, was, it was before they did the, the, the matte wraps. This was a satin clear. Yeah. That was That's sprayed over it. Right. Well, you know, maybe it just makes the car disappear entirely because you know, the, uh, do you know what lenticular is? Lenticular are the, I uh, remember little things you had when you were a kid and they looked like, you know, a regular guy and then you turned it the other way and he was a clown or something it ch- yeah. made the image change that came in little plastic things the government's been working with lenticular i read this really interesting article to where they found out if they do hard plastic in a lenticular and they bend it whatever's behind it goes away so like if they had uh, a tank sitting in a forest they use that as one of their examples yeah and put this in front of it it 
you see the forest, but you don't see the tank. So maybe it'd be the same thing, Matt. They put this over it and the car just goes away. It's just four wheels driving down the road. Yeah. There's a few things on the side of the road and underneath the bridge over here. Um, uh, some of our community that it'd be nice if we didn't see them. Those yeah, things exactly. on a regular <laughs> on a regular basis on, on the way uh, here. Um the, okay, uh, so the uh Tesla, Tesla Roadster. Um is that I, still a thing? It's it's still a thing. And um it's been in the news today because I guess Elon Musk put something out there saying the Tesla Roadster is going to come out next year. Um, on the website, they they had some lofty ideas. Zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds, 250 mile an hour top speed, 620 miles of range. If you thought that was already crazy, well, Elon Musk is saying... The car is going to come out and he goes, even if you can call it a car and he's saying sub one second, zero to 60, that seems a little much. Now, am I, am I not mistaken that this car was announced before the cyber truck? Yes. Not so. Yes. I keep trying to show and, the video. And sub, sub one second, zero to 60 the average driver and even the above average driver could not handle that in most situations. Like, you know how we, you know, might be getting on it, getting on the freeway or something. That is so incredibly fast that it's so fast. A lot of mistakes are going to be made. Yes. A lot of unfortunate injuries, I think, uh, damage to the car could possibly get. Listen, I, I know I brought this up before, but years ago over at, uh, um, remind me now the track out in Palm Springs thermal thermal. I was, uh, I don't know why I just couldn't remember that for a second. I was at thermal doing this F1 experience and we drove some, some Lotus Avoras for a while. And then at the end of the day, we got to hop into, um, uh, basically a, a, a repurposed Lotus F1 car with the V10. Oh, I remember when it, it was, it was detuned a little bit, but it was just crazy, crazy. Uh, nutty fast. Um, and I got to get in that car and really just kind of open it up on that straight and just, just, it's so fast and you're just, you're hitting the gears. It's just like zit, zit, zit. It's like bang, 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 like your first three gears in an instant. And, and it's funny, you watch in like in movies where you start to get this blurred, like tunnel vision, you know, like you're, you're, you know, you're going warp speed, you know, in Star Trek or something. Yeah, and perspectives you, all you, skewed. You do kind of get a version of that with that much acceleration going that fast. I'd be curious to 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 hear with from some of the drag racing friends of ours um, on what what their sensation is. And and is it something they just sort of get used to or don't even really notice anymore? But um, for me, instantly, uh, I kind of got that sensation and almost had that tunnel vision. Um, and I don't know how fast that was zero to 60. It wasn't one second. I can tell you that No, it wasn't nearly that fast. Um, it felt fast. And of course you're essentially in a convertible with just a, a helmet on, um, <laughs> but it's fast enough that you have a full face helmet that as you're going it without, you know, cause the helmet was just sort of borrowed. It wasn't like the right helmet, the proper fit and everything, the helmet starts to lift and pull your head off, <laughs> which is <laughs> kind of, kind of interesting. But um, anyway, I mean, the car looks cool. And these are all the, the concept drawings for it that are up on the website, the renderings and stuff for it. But I don't know. You it's think swoopy, it's, get... it's cool, but man, let's see what, what really happens, you know? Okay. Now the Rimac, which is an incredibly fast all wheel drive electric car. One of the fastest things out there. Um, I think they tested their zero to 60 in 1.74 seconds. Which is crazy fast. Which is crazy fast. So for this roadster to to be faster than that, I think I think it's gonna be a little tough. That's that's my thought. I think it's gonna be a little tough. No, if it's sub second, it'll be really tough. <laughs> it'll be a tough car. Um, that is uh, I don't I don't know. I you know, uh 
I don't know if you saw the social media post, but somebody said that uh, in the real world, uh, one of his cyber trucks were tested out. There was a truck down, I think it was Atlanta, that somebody pulled up alongside a guy in, a, in one and unloaded on him. And uh, all it was was the side window was broken. You, know, you could see the like a bullet had hit it and the whole side of it was peppered with dents, but none of them yeah. penetrated. And, uh, and, and they were like, wow. Okay. A real world test, you know? And so somebody tried to take somebody out and uh, they were saved by their cyber truck. So, you know, if you, if you listen uh, to CarCast earlier in the week or whatever it was last week, the last show um, with Alistair Weaver, they got their hands on a cyber truck for a week. And they did their photo shoots. They did some testing on it. They did their range test. And it was basically saying the Cybertruck is the only Tesla that they've tested so far that uh, met the estimated range. Oh, really? That's yeah. interesting. That's now, interesting. the range is, I think it was 340 miles was the estimated range. But the one they tested had the off-road tires which it was re which is rated at like 320 I think and they might have even beaten it they might have gotten like 326 or something out of hmm. it um uh you'd have to go back and listen to that episode yeah. to hear the actual explanation that Alistair gave and the, the actual numbers but um it was interesting and he said it was actually really interesting to drive it was very comfortable he liked the interior it's definitely polarizing everybody notices you everybody wants oh, to yeah. talk about it everybody wants to take pictures um uh it you know it's big it's heavy but not as heavy as you think even with the stainless i think it was a little bit lighter than both the rivian and the ford lightning hmm. uh, wow. which i didn't expect um yeah and then, no, you know, we, we chatted a bit about using it as a truck and it, it it doesn't have a lot of, let's say, the more common truck features that we expect, like, you know, like a step to get into the bed or, or you know, the little fold out ladder that Ford has, or now everybody has funky tailgates and they can open it, you know, down or to the side and has a door and just things like that you can't really do. So it's and a then, pickup truck circa 1996. Yeah, it kind of is. It has kind of a conventional tailgate and you kind of have to run and dive to get into it if you're my height basically yeah, you gotta uh, jump little... down from it <laughs> you know um there was uh, a little storage space in the bed in the floor of the bed i think rivian has that and i want to say the honda ridgeline because okay. it might have an independent rear um now for some reason it's not large enough to put a spare tire so if you want a spare tire that has to be an option that you get and it goes in the bed of the truck <laughs> yeah it's it's like Wow. Okay. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. But I, I'm starting to see a few on the road because I'm near a Tesla facility. I see uh, a bunch of them. Yeah. And it's it's cool looking. And I, I told Alistair, I want to drive it. So when he gets a chance, they ordered theirs, um, some launch edition version or whatever. They ordered theirs. It's not in yet. They're still waiting for the updates on it, but it's it's basically bought, paid for. Um, that One problem with stainless steel cars and it was with the DeLorean when it first came out as well. Yeah. They look fantastic when they're clean, but you drive them in the rain and they look horrible. Yeah, I mean, yes. think of what your refrigerator with just some fingerprints and stuff on it looks like. Yeah, they don't yeah. look any better. They don't. Well, and, and so people are getting some surface rust rust issues, and 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 I guess that's being addressed. Tesla has some recommendations on how to clean it and stuff. But you might know this. So one of the things we brought up was. Um, it's stainless steel and it only comes plain stainless or with a wrap on it. And the wrap I'm sure would protect it. Um, I don't know if there's much moisture that gets underneath the wrap, if it prevents any sort of rust, but if you put a wrap on it and then took it off in, you know, a year or two, what's the stainless going to look like? Is it perfect yeah. or and, and maybe it's fine, but, um, it's difficult to get paint to stick to stainless, um, especially without uh, a primer. And I'm sure they've gotten much better over the years. We understand why DeLorean didn't do it, but maybe not necessarily sure why Tesla isn't really doing it. But I wonder if there's a clear coat that would stick. And I would, I, I'm, a, I'm guessing 
Tesla might have looked into it and said it wouldn't be able to meet whatever sort of warranty claim. Exactly. That's yeah. going to be the problem. The, the, the DeLoreans, some of them in the aftermarket, you'd see a red one or a black one from time to time, and they looked fantastic. But um, it's just what you said, Matt. It might work for an individual, but, you know, the the rigorous salt tests and all of that that the paint yeah, yeah. has to hold up to, it's not going to hold up to it. So... And even if you if you can get paint to stick, a lot of that is going to be based on the primer. But doing a clear coat on the stainless, there's no primer. I I just don't know how it would work. So I don't. I can see why they didn't do it. But the wrap is interesting. And now they they've offered more colors in the wrap. They have a black and the white, and they have like a like a rose gold and something else. But it's kind of interesting. So last week we got into that quite a bit. But um, Apple's been working on an electric car and the goal was to be an autonomous car and nearly 10 years now and arguably billions of dollars. We don't know the exact amount and 2000 people are in that program, the Apple electric car program. And uh, they just decided to shutter it. They, they were reviewing the whole thing and they said, we're still going to be years away from having this. And they're like, we're, we're done. We're done. So I think a lot of the employees are going to be um, spread out among the company and working on AI, the future of AI for them. And then I don't know, there's probably going to be a handful of employees that will be laid off that were a little bit more on the car specific side and a little less on the programming and software side of things. But um, uh, yeah, it seems like. And, and they, you know, when they did that, I thought it was going to be one of those really interesting things but then it just kept dragging which is so strange for apple not to get something have strong objectives and and milestones and then come out and it just kept dragging it was kind of like an indicator for a long time yeah um anyway i uh I, we're gonna keep the show a little bit shorter the last thing i was just gonna touch on real quick for those of you guys with the ford bronco if you have a ford bronco and you do a lot of off-roading and stuff for it there is a, a, a Ford Performance is offering a steering upgrade uh, for for it. So you can you can buy it. It's about thirteen hundred bucks, but it does need uh, a software update as well. And um, it's got. I understand uh, it's a whole package for them, right? Yeah, so it's a, it's a higher torque motor. Um, it's got a reinforced gear, um, stronger inner tie rods. It's got improved articulation overall. Um, it's a it's kind of much much beefier kit. I think it's already standard on the the 2024 Badlands and Sasquatch. But if you had anything previous to that and some of the other models, um, you can. No, get it's it. like they've gone stronger on those, so now you can retrofit your earlier one just to have that. Yeah, they they found a weak link and they're offering it as an upgrade. I don't think everybody needs it if you're just mostly driving around town and stuff. I don't think you need it. But yeah, it's for anyway. somebody who's really going to use their Bronco. Yeah. And, and when I did the Bronco Raptor off rodeo thing, they were talking about that vehicle with the engineers, and and so much of that is beefed up compared to the regular Bronco. Right. The steering components, the suspension components, the frame, um, all the attachment points for the for the uh, suspension is really kind of kind of beefed up. But um, anyway, uh, yeah, I think we're gonna wrap things up. I uh, appreciate cool. you filling in today and joining us. Not a problem. Um, those for you guys that are listening, you want to see this on YouTube, you can check it out. Of course, go to bondspeedwheels.com. That's Brad's company. Please. You can custom order your set of wheels and um, and follow Brad. We'll throw a link up in the uh, in the video description as well. He's Bradley underscore Fanshawe on on Instagram. Um, and we'll we'll link to that, uh, like I said, in the video as well. Is there anything and I'm make missing? Matt's Mustang a record seller, okay? That's what yeah, we Yeah, go buy that car. You got to hurry, though, because this show is going to go up on like a Wednesday and the auction ends in like two days. So yeah. you're going to you're gonna get to, uh, see all the exciting stuff there at the end of the auction. Hopefully. Hopefully it doesn't just flatten out. But um, we got a little bit of ways to go. But um, cool. yeah, any, oh, anything fun, else Matt. I'm missing, Brad? Bondspeedwheels.com. Is there anything else? Uh, well, they can go to Bond Speed Wheels on Instagram as well. Check it out. And uh, like Matt said, we make wheels for everything from hot rods to exotics and everything in between. Your trucks, everything. Just Everything's just, custom order. So you, you all you built to order. Call, talk to Brad. Right tell him what you want. 
if you're yeah, doing something custom. Right here in Anaheim. So cool. I got Bond Speed Wheels on my ride. Support US made. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right, Brad. Thanks so much. I'll let you guys hey, go. Until you. next time, keep the air and the spare and the bag and the wheel.